Okay, so um, I had a little thought that I thought we could start with today, uh, and it's on John 14, 11, okay? Uh, Zach, you want to read the, oh, let's do the King James. So right there, the one I have highlighted. That's the one that most of us are familiar with, right? Believe me that I am in the Father, Father. And the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Okay. So I'll read it. Oh, actually, uh, Matt, you want to read it and bring in standard? Uh, read which? Bring in standard. Verse 11. Uh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. It's yeah. pretty close, but it is a little different, right? Right. Uh, believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or at least believe on account of the works themselves. Okay, so it, it just real quick, I know, uh, just to um, say something. Uh, this I am that's here, it's it's not his name. It's just a pronoun, and the M. They added to make it make more sense. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know why this is taking a while. Oh, there we yeah, go. Uh, this is one of those particular instances where he's not actually identifying himself as I am. Right, right. So this is where you just have to kind of be careful with I am. Sometimes I am is designating who he is, and sometimes it's not. You have to go look at context and original language, right? So, yes, yeah, absolutely. Uh, in fact, this might be interesting to look in the Hebrew after we do it on the Greek, actually. It just came to mind. But anyways, we'll do yeah. uh, the Greek first. But um, so this is always this is like a mystical <laughs> verse here that everybody trips over on. Right. And I'll be honest, I've tripped over it myself. What, what does this in mean, especially if you believe in some version of the godhead right in that the is specifically that the father and son are two separate beings right um i i will be honest there was one time i was in another being and that's when i was not born yet <laughs> so i'm still being formed yes. inside my mother um, powers of motivation powers of, uh, Powers of motivation were not ours at that time. Uh, right, right. <laughs> I wasn't really doing anything except growing. So, <laughs> um, uh, but anyways, um, so with with that in mind, this is kind of tricky, and I I've heard various explanations of it. Okay, mm -hmm. um, which I don't agree with anymore, and I haven't for a while actually. But um, let's go look at this word in. Uh, so it, it, I already have it up. So it's uh, Greek 1722, okay? Okay. So here's Greek 1722. Uh, it has a couple definitions. In, on, at, by, or with. Now... Uh, I do like this one here in the helps word studies uh, within or inside uh, is a good translation of my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, and then actually there's some other ones. Uh, oh, that's weird. Outwardly. I, I'd have to see that in the sentence. <laughs> That might right. be they have the asterisks because I, I actually don't know what the asterisk does here, but anyways. Um so but among within, anyways, go ahead, Ben. Within seems to make a lot of sense. Yeah, you're right, right. So let's go back. Um and let's consider while reading this modalism, right? Because yeah. that is uh how I see the quote unquote Godhead, and to be specific, uh, modalism with the spirit being Torah. Okay. Right. And the the um 
And, and uh, for those who are watching, there is a difference between modalism and Arianism. Arianism was that Yeshua was an emanation from God. Modalism, Yeshua and Theopha are God in creation. Okay, I, I completely agree. There is a difference. Um, so I do think to help us further understand what's going on, uh, I'll read verse 10 just before 11. Imagine that. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, just to help us get us some context here. Okay. But I do believe modalism, but the Father and the Son are just different titles for the same spirit, person, soul, what do you want to call it, um, yep. makes more sense here. Mm -hmm. Do you not believe that I am, and I'm going to say, within the Father, and the Father is within me? The words I say to you, I do not speak of my own. Instead, it is the Father dwelling in me, performing his works. So that is the part that's... Um, the most important part of that verse to help give us context well, the, for verse 11. The, um, the interesting the interesting thing about this, uh, let's see, Matthew, John 14. Mm -hmm. I do believe this is one of those instances where the Pharisees try to stone him, but he gets away from them. Um, John 14? Yeah. Maybe not. I may be, I may be, I may be complaining. The way the well, we, we can let's pause and let's find out for sure. So let's let's pause. Yeah. And if I'm complaining, I'm if I'm complaining, that's okay. Uh, that's no big just, deal. Let's just go find out. I don't remember. Well, let's do, let's take a look. Yeah, dive into the scripture. Yeah, yeah. So let's I'm just going to pause for a second. He wants okay. to. Okay, so we just double checked. It's not, but no worries. It's hard to remember everything. I know I don't. <laughs> well, I, I well, I, I, and uh, technically, I should have. I kind of, I feel like I kind of should have remembered because John 14 is one that I cite a lot just because of the necessity uh, of showing our love for Jehovah by keeping his commandments. Um, sure. Uh, and I, I should do a post on this one because it has to do with the Godhead too and with regarding the holy. And that's, and that actually, and, and this verse actually adds a level of meaning to uh, John 14, 15 through 21, where he talks about, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will petition the Father that he send you another comforter. Um, uh, you know, and that basically that his spirit can dwell in you. Um, For sure. Uh, and maybe after we do this, if we have time, we can maybe start getting into some of those details. Because um, yeah. I have notes on it that I need to put in a post. But anyways... Yeah. So go ahead and. Uh... Okay, so back. Let's go back to the main point here on verse eleven, though. Um. So, or, or ten, dwelling in me. So, both the Bible and the Book of Mormon says the Father is a spirit. Um. So let let's think about that for just a minute. Uh, Zach, I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm going to ask you a quick question, okay? Are you a body or are you a spirit that dwells in a body? A body. No, you're a spirit that dwells in a body. I said the latter. So, I mean... No, maybe I just uh, didn't hear you. Maybe it was too quiet and I didn't hear you. Sorry. Uh, so, yeah, we're a spirit that dwells in a physical body. Um... Now, <laughs> uh, so this, it, it, I don't know a good way to go around this, but uh, this dwelling in me, if the Father is not his actual spirit, this gets into possession. And that's a demonic, uh, satanic thing that happens 
that's not <laughs> something that Yahweh and his servants do. They don't possess our, our physical bodies. Yeah, no. Um, and so just thinking about how Satan's minions and Satan himself possess other people and how that's bad, I think also helps inform us uh, with this verse that the scriptures do actually teach modalism. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the same attributes that are visible in Yeshua are visible in the Old Testament in Hilpa. Yes. The very same attributes. The mercy, yes. the long-suffering, the slowness to anger. Um, yeah. And the slowness to anger is key because some people like to think that the Old Testament, God was a vengeful dog, God. And he was. But he was also merciful, as Ben brings out. And then mm -hmm. people like to think the New Testament God <laughs> is merciful, and he is, but he's also vengeful. And you can even see that in the New Testament during Yeshua's mortal ministry. Yeah, so with the stripes and the merchants in the temple. Yeah, that is one example, which we've gone over how um, that's according to Torah. Yeah, it's a Torah judgment. So, get, so this is, to me, this is a very... The fact that he's telling them that they should know who he is by the spirit that manifests in his actions is a clear, um, and, and in his words, is a clear, uh, is a clear identification, self-identification, uh, self-identifier uh, self between uh, Yeshua and Shahwa. Yes, I, I completely agree. In fact, to go along with this, uh, we can find out where it is, but uh, Yeshua stated, if you've seen me, you have seen the Father. Right. Now, unless he is the Father, I don't know how else to take that. Right. Uh, now, there are all kinds of explanations for that, none of which I believe anymore. Because, they, because in order for those explanations to be true... Then you have to uh, then Gil then Gilpa is uh, not who he claims to be. Right, um, because just one, more, one more thing on this idea of uh, him being a patient, long suffering, and slow to anger, and ven uh, and vengeful. Uh, God, in the Old Testament. He is he is vengeful on a people that have been so horrendously wicked and breaking all of his law for so long that he has had enough. He has given them buku of chances. And just like the children of Israel were kicked out of that, that land for disobedience to his law. That is also, you must, must, must keep the law. We must, uh, and and uh, this is kind of a, a I, I do get that it's a different idea, but you must keep his law. Otherwise, okay. you will be smitten and driven out of any land of promise. Uh, and particularly, you must keep his Sabbaths. Yes, and you must keep his Sabbaths. Now, the main it, the main thing with that is how many land Sabbaths did he allow the Israelites to violate before he actually threw them out of the land? How long suffering is Yopo? Yeah, I, I don't know the exact number. We could probably look it up and do the math, but it was a lot of them. It was a lot. The, the point is, it was a lot. <laughs> They were the the Israelites were in the holy land in the promised land for a long time before uh before they were thrust out. Well, there's very few indicators that they kept that they kept land sabbaths. 
Right. Uh, indicators that they didn't keep land Sabbaths because of uh, what the prophets teach us. In, in, uh, yeah, I think Jeremiah actually specifically states that, if I remember correctly. But yes. One of the, some of the prophets do, even if I don't remember. I know that. Isaiah also mentions that in Isaiah 1. But so yeah, it talks about it. your land Sabbath, uh, your new moons, and your worship days. But to get it back to the main point right. of this verse again, and we've sidetracked a little bit. But to get it back to the main point here, we're seeing the indwelling of Yoha in the body, in the flesh of Yeshua. Right, and with that understanding, I in the word in translation is okay okay yeah without that understanding in is kind of weird of course yes. I, I think any word would be weird without that understanding but i will say i do believe this is a personal opinion that i think within makes it less ambiguous what's going on I, I I agree. Um, in can be in can be construed in a lot in a few different ways, but within there's um, not a whole lot of room for variation on what that means. Right, I, I agree. There's, it'd be hard to construe that some other way. Right. Um, where in in has lots of meanings. In fact, I even have it kind of prepared. Um, so a prefix before so that one kind of applies is changed to ill in illusion. Uh ear, okay, but that's still going as a prefix. Uh so in the name, that's a little different here. In 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 many cases, that's a little different. Here's one that does apply. In signifies by or through. Now oh, that, uh, it, here you go. You already got two variations of what it could mean right there in that definition right right so by is actually um in one of the definitions of the greek word behind and. the english one uh -huh. and, and through does make some sense but i do believe within makes the most sense right mm -hmm. uh substitutes a pronoun related to part of the sentence oh yeah, I simmer freight. This <laughs> I'm not sure what to make out of that one right there. I, I don't know if ben or Matt wants to say more. They're better at grammar than I am. Well, which one? The in this uh one? this one right here. The one I have. Oh. Yeah. In these and similar phrases, that is an antecedent substitute or pronoun. Relating to the subsequent part of the sentence. Oh, talking about when you place in in a in a sentence or a, a sentence that could be considered as an afterthought to a main point, pointing back to the main point. So when you use the word in at the beginning of the next sentence to point back to. In is often used as the beginning of comma sandwiches. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, and then actually, this that is in, that's pointing back to the other. So, yes. I mean... Yeah, see, the word it, in, it there's so many be, different ways it's used. I, that could be what's going on here, but I don't believe that's the case, especially considering context just before it, right? Right. Right. Because the father is the son, and the son is the father, so it could that kind of applies, but I don't think it's the best. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this one I this one doesn't apply in as much, seeing seeing that this is being the fact. That being the fact, I will... the, 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 the equivalent equivalent meaning to if. Since this is the fact, this is the what comes from it. Oh, kind of. Uh, it kind of goes with, it, with the fact that the, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. Well, with the idea, the kind of goat is a companion scripture to this scripture. Um, 
or that you could use as a scripture chain um if you've seen me you've seen the father type idea sure sure so and I, that and version can... of oh sorry go ahead that version of in could work yeah th that version of here could work here right so yeah but with the context i don't think it's the best one you're right i i am in 100 percent agreement 100 percent agree properly belongs i don't think this one yeah because the father doesn't belong to the son and the son doesn't belong <laughs> yeah that, that, yeah because it's this it's the same person <laughs> so, right um, no it's just the concept of uh, uh that's a that's a dark concept right there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Anyways, Jesus um, is a slave to God, and God is a slave to Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, thank you. Right, right. And so, and then verse twelve, I think, it still goes along with this fact that the Father is the Son, because he's yeah. saying in verse ten that the Father is performing His works through the Son. Right? Yes. And act, actually performing them while he's in the sun, right? Right. Actually right. in, right there. Um, yeah. And so then 12, truly, truly, I say unto you, whosoever believes in me, Yeshua, will also do the works that I am doing. Oh, wait a minute. Was it the father doing it? Or the son that's doing it? Or does it really matter because it's the same person? Right, and 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 I think that's I think that I think that's the main thing is whether it was the father or the, whether it was the son, it's just a different um, a different uh, it's a different angle a different manifestation a different yeah. manifestation of the same being. Yeah, yeah, a different. I like to say title, but that that's fine. Manifestation. Yeah. So Right. Well, because it, it, uh, well, the reason I say the uh, the reason I say manifestation is because it, it was a physical earthly um, presence. Presence. He, For sure. He, yeah. He, no, I, I he was a physical earthly presence, whereas the um, whereas Yoha is a heavenly, all powerful. Uh, you have to be. Um, transfigured in order to see him presence uh sure sure i agree with that but he has been here on earth um like angel of yahweh that's yahweh yeah he's yeah. come there's multiple scriptures that shows in the bible and the book of mormon that he has <laughs> come down before right and then <laughs> there's charring on my mount sinai that shows that he was i he guess the most true. important thing would be made flesh uh, i guess the most yeah. important concept right. would be and made the, flesh it's the condescension of god correct i agree with that um either way i think we're on the same page right yeah no, no yeah kinda, we may have different focuses on it but we are on the same page right um, uh, it's uh yeah so it, it, the, the, and i was thinking that another really good uh verse to throw to show this is to go into the Book of Mormon, in First Nephi chapter eleven. All right. Well, let's go there. Hold on. Okay. Do you know what verse you want? Uh, condescension. Type in the word condescension. Yeah. When you do your. Uh... Oops. And we don't want the header. No, there's. Oh, here it is. We're starting. Uh, uh, we'll go with. Uh, we'll start. Uh, we'll start in verse fourteen. Yeah. And it came to pass that I saw heavens open, and an angel came down and stood before me, and he said unto me, Nephi, what beholdest thou? And I said unto him, a virgin, most beautiful and fair above all other virgins. Uh, and, that, um, and he said unto me, knowest thou the condescension of God? And I said unto him, I know that he loved his children. Nevertheless, I do not know the meaning of all things. And he said unto me, behold, the virgin whom thou seest is the mother of the son of God. 
after the manner of the flesh. So hold on one minute, okay? Um, because in the 1830, and I would also say the original manuscript, uh, I don't know if we have it on that spot or not, it says something a little different. So let's look at that, if that's okay to do a little Yeah, bit. no, that's absolutely okay. That's why I actually kind of slowed down and highlighted those words. Okay. Because yeah. I was kind of hoping that you would. Oh, okay. All right. Because I know you have the resource. Yeah, I, I mean, we can go look at it in the actual book if you want, or we can go look at my notes. It's quicker in my notes. Well, let's, let's, see. let's pull it out of the notes here. Because I have a whole bunch of examples of that issue. But anyways, here's the one that you want. <laughs> yeah, and it said, he said unto me, Behold, the virgin whom thou seest is the mother of God. Oh, wait, after wait, the manner wait, of wait the not the son? <laughs> No. Ah. No. Yeah, and, and I, for people who are Trinitarian or bringing my Godhead, that's a problem. That's a change. Yeah. Well, that's those what... Those who believe in modalism, as I do in us on the call, that's not a change. Right. It's actually just um, simply highlighting. Um, it simply it simply highlights the process whereby um, Yehovah put off the Father, became the Son. Right. Now I do know Joseph Smith made this correction, or this I don't know if correction is the best word here. Uh, change. Um. I don't see any malintent. Uh, I can see that he's reading it through, trying to correct errors that the printer uh, guy did. I never remember his name. Brandon. Yeah, because he did make some mistakes, and you can see that in, in the work of Royal Skousen. Um, and they're just honest mistakes. Um, they're, they're nothing uh, malicious that I, that I see. But anyway. Um, but... I can see why Joseph Smith accidentally changed this one because the birth could, generally speaking, would go more with the title or mode, hence modalism, of the sun. Yeah, uh, but it's just the um, the Hebrew the Hebrew word for virgin actually simply indicates someone who is someone for whom the birth canal has not yet opened or been passed through no uh, no it, so that's the greek standard. idea um the hebrew is no, that i'm not were, saying that it, 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 in, in other words i'm talking about a in other words a child passing through it not, still, not that's it. still not a virgin. A virgin is actually better translated as maiden, and it's a woman of childbearing right. age. It doesn't matter if she's born or not. And you can right. even see this in Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah calls his wife a virgin, even that's after true. she has had a child, because even she's, she's of had childbearing several children. age. True, true. Woman of childbearing True, true, true. Um, so anyways, but there is something special that needs to happen with the firstborn. Mm -hmm. uh, so th there's some significance there, but not on the word maiden. It, it's right, not, not, it's not in the word virgin. Okay. So, um, but even that idea of the firstborn even comes with even plants and animals. So that's true. That's true. Um, that, that 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 those are they're closely related but they are different right yeah yeah sorry about that mm. okay that's fine do you want to read more from first nephi 11 but yeah but this is this is the this is the thing uh, but this is the thing the condescension of god came down left his glory by joined mortality as a mortal and, and by obedience to his law, regained his power 
and was able to work mighty miracles, uh, including, uh, and because he never broke his law, as a mortal man, he was able to be the sin offering for all of us. This is the condescension of God. It's not him sending his son down uh, so that somebody else could suffer, bleed, and die for our sins. That's a Someone sending someone else to pay our other people's debt is a vengeful dog, God. Right. Uh, someone coming down himself is a merciful God. And so God puts by his glory, condescends to become mortal, and and it's really it, it's really quite beautiful it's a quite a beautiful concept yeah the the that he would that he loved us enough not only to come down and bear the pains and sin the pain well not the sins but the pain well eventually the sins but the pain just the basic pain of the existence of mortality came down to experience that and also to provide us a perfect example of what a mortal man can do. Yep. Um, so I bet you'll be fine if I bring something up. That yep, I not a problem. Provide. And I'm sure you're going to want to read it. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I think you know where I'm going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go. Okay, where do you want me to start? Well, start where you want, but I know one of the keywords is showing, so I hit yeah. that for you. Okay. The son, okay. They are the father and the son, the father being a personage of spirit glory and power, possessing of all perfection and fullness, the son who was in the bosom of the father, a personage of tabernacle, made or fashioned like unto man, or being in the form and likeness of man, or rather man was formed after his likeness and in his image, he is also the express image and likeness of the personage of the father, possessing all the fullness of the father, or the same fullness with the Father, being begotten of him, and was ordained from before the foundation of the world to be a propitiation or an atonement for the sins of all those who should believe on his name, atoning for the broken covenant, and is called the Son because of the flesh, and descended in suffering below that which man can suffer, or in other words, suffered greater sufferings and was exposed to more powerful contradictions than any man can be. But notwithstanding all this, he kept the law of God and remained without sin, showing thereby that it is in the power of man to keep the law and remain also without sin, and also that by him a righteous judgment might come upon all flesh, and that all who walk not in the law of God may justly be condemned by the law and have no excuse for their sins. Oh, wait, 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 what, what, why, why? No excuses. Oh, okay. It is possible for mortal man to live the law. Deuteronomy chapter 30, if you could pull that up. Sure. Oh, excuse me. You remember the verse, or do you want me to search for a keyword? Go, uh, start. We'll start in verse six. Okay. And Yehot the Elohim shall circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed, 
to love Yahweh Elohim with all thy heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. And Yahweh Elohim will put all these curses upon thine enemies and upon them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of Yahweh and do all his commandments, which I have, which I commanded thee this day. And Yahweh Elohim will make thee plenteous in every work of thine hand, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy land for good. For Yahweh will, will again rejoice over thee for good, as he rejoiced over thy fathers. If thou wilt hearken unto the voice of Yahweh Elohim, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law. And if thou turn unto the Lord, unto Yahweh Elohim, with all thine heart and with all thy soul. For this commandment which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee. Neither is it far off. It's not too hard for you. Wait, wait. What, what? What? Did it just say it's not too hard? It, it, no, I said, uh, I. this is me expounding oh, on okay. that. Sure, sure, sure. It is not hidden from thee. Neither is it far off. It's not too hard for you. Right, right. It, and is, then, um, it is not in heaven that thou should say, who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it down to us that we may hear it and do it? You know, it's not in heaven that you have to spend four hours on your knees asking for a single commandment, begging for a <laughs> single commandment. Yeah, I actually hear, uh, I'm going to sidetrack you just for one second. Along those lines, DC 59. And yeah. then, then we can go back, but that goes right yeah. along. Uh, you yeah. don't have to be on your knees for four hours to find out what you're supposed to do. <laughs> you're not? Uh, you're not supposed to the problem is, if that's going on, someone else might answer you. Right, because you're uh, trying uh, you're trying to force God's hand. You just did 62. Like, you went into 62. We'll go oh, back up to the top. Oh, sorry, sorry, 62. my bad. I, I meant 59. Does that count? Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure, we'll give you credit. Uh, it, it, <laughs> the intentions were good. The intentions were good. I mean... I meant to do it. Doesn't that matter? <laughs> yeah. Here we are. Wait Here a minute. I, I'm going to answer my own question. Moroni 7. No, you actually have to. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. And he, so here we are in Doctrine and Covenants 59, 21 oh, through 22. Yeah. These are probably, this is 59, 84, 88, 93, and 59 are my four favorite sections in the Doctrine and Covenants. But here we are in 59. Uh, verses 21 and 22, and in nothing doth man offend God, or against none is his wrath kindled, save those who confess not his hand in all things. And, and subsequently, keep not his commandments. Yeah. Behold, this is according to the law and the prophets. Wait, wait a minute. So I'm just going to retranslate that word. Torah and the commentary from the prophets. Right. Right. Because that's what the prophets, that's what the prophecies are about. They're about, they're extrapolating from Torah the punishments and the blessings for the righteous and the wicked. Mm -hmm. And what they're supposed situations. to be doing. And it's not just that, but also what they're supposed to be doing, and right, like and what will understand. what will cause them to be both righteous and wicked. Um, wherefore trouble me? What? Well, wait, wait. Wherefore trouble me no more? Wait, 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 wait a minute. And also, uh, who who's saying this prayer and this response? Oh yeah, it's Joseph Smith, the prophet of the yeah, restoration. And who, and who is saying who is saying this to Joseph Smith? Yahweh. Well, Yahshua. Yeshua. I'm more prone to say Yahweh because of where it's at, but it, Yeshua, yeah. whatever. Flesh. Therefore, trouble me no more concerning this matter. Oh, why are out there praying? Don't ask me anymore. <laughs> if you're out there praying over whether you should obey any part of any part of the law that is written in His Word, you are under condemnation, for you are taking lightly the new covenant. According to the Doctrine and Covenants, section 84, verse 57. 
Yeah. Um, but here, and I, I do find verse 23 very telling why he yeah. says, don't ask me anymore because you've already been given the answer. Right. right. So go ahead and read verse 23. But learn that he who doeth the works of righteousness shall receive the, wait a minute, works of righteousness. Oh, oh. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Yeah, where, where, where's that defined again? Oh, yeah. Oh, in verse 22. And are the works of righteousness. In verse 22. Are the works of righteousness synonymous with dead works? No. No, but works of righteousness are according to what Ooh, Yahweh yeah. said is is holy. Right, right. holy it's and righteousness are Torah. synonyms. Right, it's according to it's according to Torah. And so my point is to also lead from that from that as a uh, refute refutation to this idea that dead works were the works of the law. Uh. Right, that that we we if we want to get into Paul, we can. <laughs> but but I'm just saying, but I'm just saying that this actually clearly refutes that idea because the works of righteousness are the works of Torah. Right, um, right. Uh, and I just want to uh, partly being funny and partly being serious, but righteousness, holy, both point to Torah. Righteousness and holy are synonyms. And cinnamon makes things taste so much better, so that's why we should be doing Torah. Anyways. There we go. There we go. I do love cinnamon, but anyways. Uh, cinnamon but awesome. on the serious note, uh, Torah tastes like honey, and that is what mm -hmm. wine is. It does sweet. taste like honey. And, just, oh, and, you, and have you ever had, uh, have you ever had uh, honey flavored with cinnamon? Um, I don't I recommend it. I recommend. I highly recommend. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll uh, work on tasting that. Yeah. I it said shall receive his reward. Wait, who receives the reward? Oh, he wait. who doeth the works of righteousness. That uh, he already told us what it is. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> you don't have to pray on your knees for four hours to find out. And it's what not a part. It, it, and just to go back to Deuteronomy chapter thirty-two, it's uh, chapter thirty. It's not. Well, a wait, let me let me say one other last thing, uh, real quick before we go back to Deuteronomy thirty. So, if you think you need to be led in all things, that you have to pray for four hours to get all the details, Ooh, uh, there's another statement from Yahweh in His revelations. He. It was commanded to, uh, yeah, in yeah. all things, is a slothful and not a wise servant. Yeah. So with that, do you, now do you want to go back to Deuteronomy 30? Yeah, let's go back to Deuteronomy 30, um, back where we were there. Uh, and it's back to the idea, it's not far off. It's not in heaven. Uh, it's not it, it's not stuck in heaven, I should say, though Psalms tells us that all matter all matters Torah are settled in heaven for eternity. Um, right. Meaning that's where they were decided what to do, what they what is righteous and how what the punishments are for when you're break it, when you're wicked, when you're right. sitting. Right. Yes. So yes, exactly. So it's not a. It's it, it's um, you don't have to spend hours on your knees. You don't have to go away in a ship. Mm -hmm. And and find the find the treasured document. Yes. Because for many of us, for many of us, the basics of it. I believe I believe sincerely that for many people, the basics of Torah are written on their hearts. Yes. The basics. Oh, yeah. and, and for it's written on all adults. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that is from scriptures, Book of Mormon, Old Testament, New Testament, and the DNC. Um, right. And I, I'm saying adults on purpose. Okay. It's not on all children. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway. so they, and so, and so we don't have to go far for it at all. Um, but uh, it would be good to search. Torah for answers rather than uh, to spend more time searching Torah for answers and less time. Um, Wait a uh, minute. That sounds like those who seek 
but and, and and that also goes along how and Yahweh in the DNC was it eight and nine. First, you should study it out and then ask me, not just ask. What? Right. I I think we can. Uh, not saying that we shouldn't ask God, but rather that we should spend more time searching it out before we take a before we take a semi-formed conclusion to him. Hey, so Stephen, let's open up DNC section. I want to say it's either nine. A, uh, DNC 9. Yeah, let's open up DNC 9. Okay, so I, I'll do that. Let me do one other thing real quick that goes along with Deuteronomy 30, okay? Yes. And then we'll yes. do that, okay? Yep. So um, I want to share at the risk of sounding lame, a seminary mastery scripture but That's it is a synthesis of what ben just shared with us okay um so this is nephi for when lehi was you know giving the commandment that they needed to go get the brass plates yeah. uh which actually in first part of mosiah brings out if lehi hadn't had the plates he wouldn't have been able to keep Torah. Not that, well, he could have still kept it if he was on his knees for four hours. Is actually just plain out stating in simple terms, he needed the brass plates. Meaning, yeah. I'm really emphasizing here with Ben, it's not about being on your knees for four hours. It's about reading and studying his already given words and my question and my que uh, uh, and a further question off of this idea is did paul did the apostle paul tell us to pray for uh, to pray for hours a day so that we may stand approved or did he tell us to study that we may stand approved uh well i don't have everything memorized but it was the study <laughs> yeah <laughs> 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 uh, but well, but, what do i know it's just scriptures <laughs> but just making but, sure that we bring this full circle okay wait wait let me let's read uh first nephi oh, you haven't read it okay my bad yeah, we okay. have it i i i i i was being i so we got carried away a little. Anyway, a little yeah, snarky, are we? anyways it came to pass that i nephi said unto my father lehi i will go and do the things which yahweh had commanded Okay, for I know that Yahweh giveth no commandment. Okay, so uh, Yahweh gives no commandment unto the children of men, save or except Yahweh shall prepare a way for them or make a way for them that they may accomplish the thing which he, Yahweh, commanded them. Oh, wait a minute. So just put it simply. If Yahweh command, he makes a way that you can do it. Which means there's no excuse for any sin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and the, including including he made a way for us to he made a way for the slate to be wiped for our past the slate of our past sins to be wiped clean, so that we could be found spotless, as he himself. In this, in the, in the form of the sun, became sin. I, I like to. I think a better translation is he took on sin. But anyway, yeah. Well, you know, I, I'm but, fine with that. The whole idea I, of the became sin comes so much, carries so much of the, um, so much of the uh, symbolism of the Day of Atonement. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Um, it, it maybe um, it's just still I still have somewhat of a Greek mind. So, anyways, yeah, it's uh, it, he became sin so that we could be sinless, that our sins, the sins of our past, could be blotted away. Yes, and of the past is a key word. Yes. yes. Um, and so we can be perfect. Because okay. of the because of the great love that Yish, that uh, that Yahweh has 
for his children. We can live, we can walk blameless before God and be perfect in our generations. Yes, we, we although, so just to resolve a little issue that some people might be thinking, we all have sinned in the past, except Yeshua. So if someone comes up and tells you that you're, they have not sinned, they are liars. But that verse does not say that of the future. That, that it says person. it of the past. You can keep the law from here on going. Right. Right. And it's not... It, and when you dwell in the Savior and, and when you dwell in the Savior and what he's done for you the motive power to do so is not too difficult to achieve yeah okay so I think uh, with that we can go to the verse that Matt wants right yes DNC section 9 okay and this is to flesh out an earlier point regarding uh, study before prayer. Yeah, yeah. That way, um, you don't have to spend four hours on your knees. And by the way, you're not working out the answers with Yahuwah when you spend four hours on your knees. That, you're working out the not... answers with a demon or your inner self. Yeah. Sorry, that's just the way it is. Yeah. Now he says, "Go study it out and then take it to him." Yeah, Not so work it out with him, right? Starting in uh seven, let's start okay. in seven to get some context, or actually six. Okay. Do not murmur, my son, for it is wisdom that I have dealt with you after this manner. Wisdom in me that I've dealt. Or well, yeah, whatever. Yes, yeah. you're right. Sorry, misread. Behold, you have not understood. You have supposed that I would give it unto you when oh, you wait, took wait a minute. Thought so David was to ask me. Wait, 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 wait a minute. So if all I do is get on my knees for four hours just to simply ask, is it could it be talking about something along those lines? No. Or if or if all I do to receive the information is sit through a couple hour long pre an hour to two hour presentation that's very that's geared to get me to an emotional place where i'm ready to accept and then just get down on my knees and pray right there yeah this verse seven condemns both what i bring out or brought out and what ben brought out that <laughs> is not what how prayers are answered well from yahweh elohim the god of abraham isaac and jacob that's not how it works with him satan no. will do whatever the hell he can to get you to listen to him the word choice absolutely intentional verse eight but behold i say unto you okay now you thought that i would give it to you but for just asking and not thinking about it but behold i say unto you that you must study it out in your mind Oh, you've got to think about it. And then you must ask me if it be right. Uh, oh, wait, if wait it be minute. right. What, ask me if it's right. After you've studied it out and you've come to a conclusion, then bring the conclusion to the Lord. Don't sit there and say, I'm going to make up a sentence and then I'm going to ask. Actually, let me do you mind if I actually pull something else out that I'm yes. saying here. Absolutely. For sure. Are you ready or should okay. I? So, so Torah is a revelation of the mind and will of Yopa. Yeah. Yeah. So you study it out in your own mind. And then you must ask me if it be right. Or you or look in Torah. The revelation of the mind and will of Yopa. Mm -hmm. Ask me if it be right. And if it is right, I will cause that your bosom shall burn within you. Now, a lot of people think of the, uh, you know, the interesting thing is that I've had many instances 
especially recently, whereas I've been reading Torah, my bosom burned. Um, and it's, it's a physical sensation, but it's more than that. It's a, it's, it's spiritual as your, as your spirit is actually reacting to being in contact with the mind and will of Yopa. It's intelligence, your intelligence. intelligence. Right. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, rev a, a, a revelation is what ignites this fire. It's not so, some kind of chemical reaction. It's an intelligence that ignites this fire. So if I can interject a little bit. Sure. Uh, so this burning, I do believe, points to being in the presence of Yahweh. Yeah. Because uh, if we're a sinful man and we go in his presence, we're going to burn. And it's yes. because of the glory, the honor, which comes from Torah. Yes. And him keeping it perfectly. That's why I'm saying it, it's related to that. Okay. Yes. And you shall feel and you shall feel that it is right. So that feeling that it is right, it is the feeling of pure intelligence. That feeling that it is right. It is pure intelligence. It's it's not a chemical it, reaction kind of feeling. And then also it makes it so you can discern. So after Moses um met with Yahweh in got confirmation and things and got other answers right mm -hmm. the devil came and then the devil came right and and moses could discern because he knew it was right and wrong where these people other there's a lot of people that claim they're getting these answers but yet they still can't discern things right and they even, even with on the subject that they're claiming they got an answer on so did they, they really dis, they can't discern things that they they can't discern things that they got a revelation on the revelation did not give them any light did it right did not give because them... that's what light does for us it helps us to discern that which is in the shadows yep uh where if you you think you got an answer but you still can't discern you might want to question where you got your answer. Right. <laughs> you might. You know. So, yeah. yeah. And and so, but if it be not right, you shall have no such feelings, but you shall have a stupor of thought <laughs> that shall cause you to forget the thing which is wrong. And I have actually experienced that as I have taken a thought that, uh, uh, as I have taken a thought that I had worked out, thought was pretty cool, and I brought it before Torah, and I, it was clearly refuted, and I, uh, it, and it's resulted in, uh, it resulted in great discomfiture. Discomfiture, that's so good. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I, I've, I've had that happen too. I, I, I remember uh, earlier in my life when I thought I got something from Yahweh because it was cool and awesome. <laughs> sorry awesome um <laughs> but as i've grown in the word in his actual word i look back and i know it was just my own pride mm -hmm. and my own heart cell where some people have copyrighted that but i mean we do it to ourselves all the time oh yeah yeah it's just that somebody got smart enough to actually uh make a patent on it yeah, and make money off of it because uh, they love witchcraft. <laughs> but anyways, that's another subject. <laughs> um, anyways, um, so it, when you first start out, it, it it can be difficult, okay? And, and that's part of the reason, I will say, that that's why Yahweh wants pe new people in the Word to seek out teachers who are actually keeping the word and yes. I bring that because that's actually how Abinadi says it and I think was I 18 give or take uh anyways yeah. I don't that's say Alma. That. that would be Alma because Abinadi is oh yeah, yeah yeah that that's that's what I meant that's what I was thinking but not my mouth saying sorry so yes because <laughs> uh, it has to do with uh Alma after Abinadi so but that <laughs> is in older. Mosiah it's in the book of Mosiah that's 
Yeah. The Talmud of the Elder. Yeah. But he only called teachers from among the people who were keeping the law themselves. Correct. It, for it is a fool who calls teachers who are not keeping the law. Right. And and, and part of the reason I would say that's the case is because Yahweh himself, or Yeshua, even in the New Testament, states, if you don't keep it, you don't understand it. Right. Yeah, the, thing, the thing is of Yopa, you cannot have a great, you cannot have the greater understanding of them. You might know them in your head, but you don't really understand them. Right. It's a difference between knowledge and wisdom, right? Yeah. Um, anyways, uh, do we want to keep going in DNC 9? Uh, no, that is the basic gist of it, because basically it goes on to talk about he was given the ability to translate, but now it the time is he feared and the time has passed for him to no longer have to translate. It's got a translation has to go back to Joseph Smith. Uh that kind of that kind of thing. So right. the rest is not really germane to the subject at hand, which is you do not spend four hours on your knees. If you are doing that, you are inviting Hasatan or Satan into your life. And you are not building. Well, unless, that, unless that four hours is spent pleading for forgiveness of your sins. Well, right. Uh, but that's a, get a that's different than asking for answers, though. Right, that's true. That's, that's true. what I'm talking about, is answers. Right. Uh, yeah, it, it, well, the, I'm I'm just pointing out. Yeah, it's, it's a good that clarification. Thing, that's that's there what is I'm going to point to is Enos spending hours on his knees praying for forgiveness of his sins. And I was like, yes, well, he's praying for forgiveness of his sins. He's not praying to get uh, spe special mystery, uh, special mysteries 101 from Yopa. No. Right, right. Or, or what? telling him what to do also. Right. Yeah. Um, and I... I I mean, it was not there, okay? But I speculate the reason why it took hours because he was not in the right place initially and it took him hours to get into the right place. Mm -hmm. I, I know that might not be speaking very nicely of Enos, but it's going off of personal knowledge and scriptures. If you're in the right well, place um, it for asking for repentance, it doesn't take that long. If you're, you're in the, not in the right place, it can take that long. When, it, when, I prayed, when I prayed for forgiveness of my sins, when I was in the right place, it was almost, I didn't have to pray for more than 10 minutes. Because, and the 10 minutes was mostly just to actually so that I could actually fully understand where I was, what I had done, um, and what it was that I needed to repent of. Understanding. Yeah, so on Enos, I will bring this out. I find it purposeful that in the account about Enos praying about being forgiven of his sins, it brings out that he has his bow and arrow with him. Yes. And that he was hunting, so he's searching. But bow and arrow are symbolic of Torah. So here he is being asking the praying for his forgiveness of breaking the law, which is Torah. Because unless you know Torah... You're not going to know why you need to even ask for forgiveness because you hadn't sinned if you don't know Torah. So I do find it meaningful that Enos had a bow and arrow what represents Torah with him and that he was out hunting, seeking when he prayed to receive forgiveness. Because those are two things that are needed. To know the law, thus to know that I'm a sinful man. I said, I. 
and the uh and then for my uh when i received um and that was for that was for an initial that was for an initial forgiveness before i got baptized and then i received uh the baptism of fire that as my knowledge had increased of the law that required more time in prayer mm -hmm. um, because uh, uh, because my knowledge was increased but not my understanding my understanding comes with time right as you keep it and it starts to actually mean something and so and so I had to be brought to understanding before I could be brought to before I could be brought to um, uh, and I uh, and I had and I had to make and I had to enter into that covenant with you yep. um, in that moment. Uh, I covenanted with him that I would do whatever he asked me to do. And it's interesting that my instructions upon receiving the baptism of fire were, now that you have tasted the goodness of God, invite all who will to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Sounds like Lehi and First Nephi 11. And uh, the other... And the and so it's uh, and I've been and I've been trying to do that ever since, regardless of what other people may have felt about my attempts to do so. Well, um, it's between you and Yahweh, not you and the world. That's right. Um, it, uh, people people judge unrighteously all the time. <laughs> yeah um, uh, and uh they this the and most of the time it's when they're judging the intent of a person's heart for we know for no man can know the intent of another man's heart well and then i would even add because most people don't know torah or even believe it's still valid they're not even just judging actions correctly regardless of the heart but this is this is correct this is correct um because no man can judge the heart no so did we learn where do we learn that stephen in first samuel the, the, uh, i i'm going to say torah but i'm sure there's other places i just don't know any off the top of my head well it's uh first samuel when samuel goes to judge the sons of jesse to choose the next king Oh yeah, okay. I, I know what you're getting at. The, but all, uh, he was but all I have but all I have to say is that regardless of how long it took me in prayer to get to and to get to forgiveness and to being born again. I know that I have been. The boot Ben scoot over a little bit. I know that I have been born again. And I know that I am a new man in Yeshua HaMashiach, not an old man with new excuses. And uh, as a result, my tolerance for sin is actually uh, is severely decreased over what it used to be. But at the same time, I see why people do it. But at the same time, it pains me. My sin, my, the the sins, the sins that I have committed in my past no longer pain me, because I am born again, and they are washed away. So no man can use a sin from my past to blackmail me, because I'm not emotionally connected to them anymore. I'm born of the Spirit, man of God. And I can tell you that when you have been born of the Spirit, a man of God,
Oh, it's frozen. I'm gonna pause. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, apparently the uh, and while I was relating my experience, the uh, internet on my side kind of got a little unstable. Uh, but uh, I'm going to try to pick up where I believe it left off, and that is that I am a new man, born again, born in the fire, born born of. Uh, Born in the blood of the Lamb, born in the water, born again of the Spirit. Working, working towards the work, working towards the working towards the final baptism, where my, uh, where I have been judged, and where I have been judged to have kept my covenant with Yahweh, that I will obey all of His commandments, which He has given to us in his Torah and the prophets. And I can tell you, to the man born again, the Torah is not too far off. It is not too hard for you to do. And I will add, if you have truly been born again and stayed that way, that is your desire. Right. Now, I do understand when you're first born again, you don't understand these things. But that's why I said stayed. That and that's, that's a, the other. Oh. Shortly after I had my baptism of fire, um, as I was praying to know what I should do now. <laughs> okay, I've had this wonderful experience. What do I do now? Um as you know outside of doing my missionary work and what have you um the answer came back to me study my law you mean like dnc 59 that yahweh said to joseph smith yep he said study my law which was a very hard thing for me to do because the teaching at that time that I was receiving at that time was telling me that the law was irrelevant. My, when I first started on this thing, I, I had something somewhat similar but different at the same time, if that makes sense. And hopefully if I explain this a little bit, it'll make more clear. Uh, I grew up with I kind of started this route down with someone who grew up a Pharisee. I, I mean, Orthodox Jew. Well, wait a minute. They're the same thing. They're the same. They're the same thing. I, I know. Um, in fact, Orthodox Jews pride themselves on being able to do their authority back to the Pharisees. Okay. So right. the it, there, there's not an Orthodox rabbi that cannot trace their uh, the lineage of their uh, ordination back to the Pharisees. Right. So, but anyways, they have, the, they love their oral law, which really screws up Yahweh's written law. And I didn't know any better initially, so I was confused. But when I finally figured that out, everything started to click. So mm -hmm. it, it, we're all confused initially for different reasons, and that's why it's good to get... Well, yeah, and in my experience, I was being taught that I was supposed... And this is why I dwell on this a lot, is I was being taught that I needed to pray to receive my commandments. The law had been rendered irrelevant, and now the law is given to each of us to pray. That's what I was being taught. Um, Which is contrary to DNC 59 to yes. the prophet of the restoration, Joseph Smith. Right. And so, uh, and so when I received this instruction, I was like, okay, well, this is interesting. And I, but I started, to, but I started to do it and instantly ran into, uh, ran into issues with what we were doing with the Sabbath. And I was like, oh, there's nothing in the law about Sabbath Sunday. Oh. It says seventh day. And that's when I started uh that's when I started my um 
I I refer to it as my Seventh Day Adventist um, yeah. run of Sabbath day observance, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and I became a Saturday Sabbath person, and this caused a great deal of trouble for me uh, with those whom I, with whom I had been associating. Uh, and so, you know, it, it, but then it, it be, I'm guessing it's because Yoho saw that I was trying to obey his word, that I was trying to get more information on his law, that I was trying to be obedient to his, to what he had told me to do. He arranged for me to actually get into conversation with Stephen Ratz here, who has augmented my knowledge of the law exceedingly you've helped me too uh well thank you uh you know that's all, all we can do all we can do is our best at an, on any given day sometimes my best is better than others <laughs> <laughs> i have my ups and downs too as you've seen but anyway but um the so, and all of this to go back to First Nephi chapter 3, verse 7, the Lord provides a way. When he gives a command, when he gives a command, he provides a way. There's no, I, I had no way of actually being able, I, I was growing in my ability to contextualize the Old Testament already before I met Stephen. But I had no idea how to relate, how to marry the what is referred to as the old and new covenants. I was still looking for the way to marry that, to reconcile the two. Um, and Stephen and the Lord provided me with a man who knew that it was a renewed covenant. Well, it took me a while to figure it out. So I'm glad I could help it be faster for you. And uh, so I was able to, and uh, and that that for me was the key. And suddenly I realized, oh, nothing's obsolete. Nothing's void. The words of Yopa are, the words of Yopa are true. If he spoke it, it will return fulfilled. So one thing I will just add, and this is a technicality, but I do believe it's an important one. Law of Moses is done away, but right, that, but it was rendered obsolete at a certain period of time. Right, that it was supposed it it was there to it, it was there for a purpose to bring people to the schoolmaster, um, or to the it was the schoolmaster to bring people to the tutor. Yes. Um, and it, it points to his atonement, but people didn't catch that. Anyway, right. I am just want to make sure. Uh, so so, my, so it, my point my point still stands. It was not rendered obsolete. Its purpose had been completed. Sure, sure. It was a punishment that was supposed to point people to him yeshua and his atonement so they would recognize it when it happened uh sadly many did not um but anyway. yeah well they it's because they had put the, it's because they had raised their own traditions and their own practice of sacrifice above uh the actual law that yopa had given them it, yes um i agree um and so but the point is, seek Yopa, seek Yeshua, seek repentance and forgiveness of your sins, covenant with Yopa, that you will keep all of his commandments. Because when you covenant with Yeshua, you covenant with Yopa. Why? Because Yopa was in Yeshua. And when Yeshua and when Yeshua comes to on earth to reign, Yahweh will again be in Yeshua. 
he still is um, because he's right. resurrected and the spirit's in the physical body and the Book of Mormon says they will never separate. But that's right. So they are in they are in each other when he took on the flesh. He glorified it in him. Yeah. Through his through obedience to his mind and will. So since he was born, there's only been three days and three nights. That, that was not the case. But anyways. Pretty much, pretty much. But yeah, uh, so it, but yeah, I just I I would just encourage you. Uh, I encourage anybody who watches this video seek Yeshua. Seek the forgiveness of your sins, and covenant with Yeshua that you will obey all of Yehovah's commandments. For Yeshua has spoken nothing of himself, but what Yehovah has put in him. Yep. And this is the new covenant, even the Book of Mormon and the former commandments which I have written. Yeah, Keep which his points to Torah, because that's what Yahweh wrote. Yep. But... Keep his commandments. And you too can be born again. And stay that way. And stay that way. Which is what gives you the power, which is which is what Mosiah refers to as putting off the natural man. Mm -hmm. And becoming an becoming a saint through the atonement of Yeshua Hamshiach. The Messiah who is Yahweh. Becoming as a little child. Submissive, meek, humble, patient, willing to uh, uh, willing to submit to whatever the Father seeth fit to inflict upon him. And in this life, in this life, for the most part, most of the, our experiences are the result of mortality. And the only thing that the Father inflicts on the natural man is his law. Mm-hmm. That's in Mosiah. Uh, two through five. I don't remember the exact chapter. Uh, it's uh, Mosiah chapter uh, chapter three, verse 16. Okay. Here, I'll, I'll get that for you. Pretty sure. Which one is it? Uh, the natural man is an enemy to God. 319. 319. Sorry. Yep, there you go. And so we'll read that. But sixteen might not hurt to read for. Uh, uh, well, uh, we, for content. I'm but I for, for the teach. I think for the teaching we're good with nineteen. Yes. Um, for the natural man is an enemy to God. That means that spirit uh, that, uh, it, it, that your natural that our natural tendency is to be at enmity with God. It, it has been from along the with, Adam. Let me just add, because naturally people love to sin. So, I mean, this goes along. So some people will claim, well, people just wrote the Bible because it's what they want. Uh, I don't know about you, but uh, most men want to break the commandments, not keep them. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, so... The natural man is an enemy to God and has been from the fall of Adam and will be forever and ever unless he yields to the enticings of the Holy Spirit. The enticings of the Holy Spirit. So Usually it, enticings are re referred to in a negative light, but here it's been a positive light. Yeah, let's look at that word. Sorry, yep. keep talking. Oops, wrong button. <laughs> Yeah, I, I just know that in English scriptures, that word is often used for the enticements of the devil, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Uh, sure, sure. That's one of the uses. But like you said, it's not the only one. Yeah. Okay. To incite or instigate by inciting hope or desire. Oh, Usually, look at this this hope 
goes along with ether 12 and desire has to do with what we want or desire usually in a bad sense as to entice one to evil that's usually in a bad sense but let's let's now look at this definition of entice and let's take that back to um the holy spirit in mosiah chapter 3 9, mosiah chapter 319 are, are you seeing it yeah Okay, okay. Sometimes it acts funny. so unless he yields to the enticings or the um, encouragement of the holy spirit now when we understand that the holy spirit is torah what is it that torah convinces us of when we are Everyone sinners holy or the holy behavior. what is it that convinces us of, of when we are sinners before we have been born again oh that we need to repent yes it convinces us of our sin and of our yeah. need for a savior. It yeah. this is what it's this is why it's using this word enticings. It shows us our sin. Right, right. And the savior is the hope. So so this, so this is a this is a clear connection by using this word enticings. This is a clear connection between the Holy Spirit and the law. Because it is the law that convinces of us of our sin and of our need for a savior. Right, right. And the reason we say uh, this is Torah is because if you go look up one of the definitions of spirit, it actually is behavior. Mm -hmm. And what teaches us to have to be holy or have a holy behavior? It is Torah. Okay. And so uh, this also goes along with Torah and putteth off the natural man and becometh a saint through the atonement of Yeshua HaMashiach. So, put it off the put it, or in this case, actually a more literal translation here could be through the atonement of Savior or of Messiah Yopa. Mm -hmm. Once again, teaching that Messiah is Yopa. Yep, as in modalism here. I mean, even mm -hmm. right there, it states it right. If you know what to yep. look for. Because Yahweh is, is the a uh, name for okay. the father mode, and Yeshua is the mode of the son. But, so how do we put off the natural man? How do we put off the flesh? Uh, By the way of well, holiness. We keep our hearts within the bounds of Torah. Yes. By walking, walking, in, walking the in the way of holiness. Yeah, yeah. And we come under, the, first we come under the covering of the blood of the Lamb. And we covenant to keep his commandments. Then we are baptized in water. And then, as we keep his commandments, and as his, and as we, uh, as we are remade, we become a saint through the atonement of Yeshua Hamashiach. We become as a child. When you're, we're not talking about a literal physical child. We're not literally physically his children, but we become his followers. Yep. We submit to his will. We're meek. We humbly follow Torah. We're humble. We're patient, full of love. Full of love. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Willing to submit to all things which Yahweh seeth fit to inflict upon him, even as a child doth submit to his father. So, so we uh, we are along. taught, we are taught from the mind and will of Yoppa, which is Torah, which is the one thing that he gives us that is an infliction from him on our natural man. Right. And all things is a phrase that does point back to Torah. Yeah. And it's throughout lots of scriptures. I so that is, that I'll put in the notes that uh, shows some of them. Yeah. So. I think that that so that is um, so that is what I would encourage everyone to everyone who watches this to do is to seek Yopa, to seek Yeshua, come under the covering of the blood of the Lamb, keep his Sabbaths, keep the law. He said Covenant Sabbaths in, because there's three types, but right, keep the law. Covenant that you will keep the law and then do it. He will remake you. He will transform you. 
You mean like the refiner's fire? Yep. Uh, and uh, and the more you submit, the more you submit to his will, the less like a fire it becomes. Or the less like a torch. Uh, no, less like I, a I would say it stays a fire, but it's one that you rejoice in now rather than it. Well, yeah, it's yeah. Difficult. That's that's more what I meant. It's, Just like exercise. It's not tortuous. It's not tortuous. It's not like it's being inflicted on you. It's not like it's um it's more like Almas. It's more like that constant burning um joy within, even when circumstances are bad and you're feeling um a certain level of sorrow, there's still that there's still that uh, so like is Paul and uh, forgive me if I forget the name wrong or get the name wrong. Cornelius in the jail while they were in jail, they were praising Yahweh. That's right. Um, you know, it's uh, and that and uh, and having read the account of their imprisonment, um, they had every reason to be bemoaning their fate. Oh yeah, but they were praising Yahweh in song. That's right. Uh, and uh, and so I I would I would encourage you to do those things which bring that strength. And by the way, if you're following a teacher of Paul who's telling you that the, Paul told you that the law is done away with, I would ask you: Are the signs that follow those that believe a part of your life while you're living under this teaching? And if they're not. Wouldn't it be worth the experiment to find out what it means to really believe? And I just want to say real signs, not ones that you you or others talk you into. Right. Things. When I'm talking about signs, I'm talking about things that are technically unexplainable. And that doesn't and a change of mind does not qualify. Right. These are true miracles, not things that happen every single day to everybody, including um, and I'm sorry, the way that a sun the way that a sunbeam si shines through a raindrop as it clings to the to the rain gutter, that's not a miracle. That's technically scientifically explainable. Right, right. And it happens to atheists also. So that's right. So it's not a sign that follows those that believe. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, if anything. That would be considered an omen, which Torah actually speaks out against. So, anyways, right. So when it, th there is, it's an interesting thing. We are not to seek for signs, but we are to look for them. Yeah, we're supposed to watch for them, not ask for them. That's right. Including so, asking for a sign to know uh, that he's answering your prayer. It's a sign seeker, but anyways. Right. So the it, the um the the main thing is um speaking as somebody who's had answers to prayers from Hilpa. Uh when he answers your prayers, you know. And what he gives you is not, and what he gives you does not run contrary to what he has already revealed. No. Um, so seek Yeshua, come under his covering, repent of your sins, return to the law, keep his Sabbaths, and know what it means to believe. I'm I'm going to pause